know this is going to sound crazy, we haven't even seen about 80 to, I would say, 80% of our land. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. What do I do? That's what I'm talking about, y'all. You see, coming here with a bobcat, we're just been mowing everything over, but look at this. We're kind of worried about her not eating or drinking. What's up, guys? Welcome back. We have a lot of new viewers, so let's quickly recap what's been going on. We bought a property, we bought eight quartas. So I uh, know a lot of people want to know how much we bought. We bought eight quartas, which is... I think it's does with a D. Oh. But uh, does. it was like eight, eight and a partial. Um, we had the old survey, so it's like eight and a partial on there. Once we get the land clear, we're gonna have a new survey and see exactly kind of what we're paying for. But the taxes that we're paying now is for like 8.8 .8 cuerdas or some or nine cuerdas. We're not exactly sure yet, but that's about what we got. And I don't know. Seems like a lot of land for two old, two old new farmers. <laughs> but it is surrounded by a little bit of water. It's like a creek, but it looks kind of like waterfalls. So it's really majestic. We have a old abandoned house that is partly on the property on the very edge. We have now cleaned it out got rid of a lot of the grass and vines around it. We slightly put on a roof. We have transformed it in the last episode into a warehouse. And now we are gonna use that little bit of shade and roof for working in it to get Matt out of the sun. And right now it's basically storage for us. We are currently living in a camper that we have now somewhat got sort it out so we can live on the property and continue to work on it today we're getting into getting that water situated and some laundry and we have a lot more ahead but that is what's going on so today we just need to get into work and i know this is going to sound crazy we haven't even seen about 80 to i would say 80 percent of our land yeah, that we purchased five. it's way overgrown Sorry. so we're going to work in to start cutting some of that out and seeing what we really got All right, y'all, so I got myself here a 200 gallon cistern. We could have gone bigger, but the tank on the boat was only 45 gallons, and that lasted us about five days each. So I figured 200 gallons will do us real good. It rains here almost every day that we've been out here, so catching rain is gonna be pretty easy. Plus the municipality will bring water out to you if you need that to do. So I gotta hook it up with a pump, and since everything that we're building recently is kind of like sub-temporary, I guess. Temporary, half permanent, I don't even know what it is, but we need survival stuff, we need water. I need a way to wash my clothes, take showers, access my water more easily, so I got a nice little water pump. And what I'm gonna do to keep this thing safe is I'm gonna put it inside so that my pump can be on a level surface, everything can go real smooth. But the bad thing about this cistern is it does not fit through the door, so I'm gonna have to throw it over the wall and down from where the roof used to be so I can get it inside so that it'll be protected. I don't know if I'm ready. What do I do? Okay, I got it. Okay, let the bottom down a little bit. So now I'm getting into my plumbing. I'm really not too worried about this sort of stuff because I was a world famous plumber back when I used to build pools. Even my dad can't say nothing bad about that because I used to be like legit with the plumbing. So I never only had one leak my whole career. So I have to get this done, put a little nipple in here, put this out. I'm gonna put a ball valve on it just to make sure if I ever have to work on anything down the line, I can turn the water off and don't lose all the water from my cistern and we're gonna move it down. We're gonna move it out from here, move it into the pump, move it from the pump up and out into a hose bib, and then this should be pretty straightforward and painless.
So I got the Aqua Blue PSQB 060-A because I would like to tell you it was because I know anything about pumps, but this was basically like the, not the cheapest one at the store, but pretty low down there. And it was a lower power one because I don't need a ton of pressure. I don't want my water running crazy. I want a low uh, power draw for this system. So this was the pump I got to try out because this is my first Fourier into cistern stuff. So I didn't want to start too big. I want to start small and work my way up if I have to. All right, so now I have it plumbed into the front of the pump, and now I have to just make my little spigot. All right, so basically to prime these pumps, you normally would fill this part up with water before you plumb it in. I forgot about that because I'm a YouTuber and I wasn't fully focusing on my task. I was focusing on telling you guys that I got to Don't make up. up excuses. And uh, so now we'll have to hook the hose up to it and blow water in. Hopefully that will work and I'll be able to get it primed that way. So I've been catching rain already off of our awning here. It rained pretty hard. And what I do is I let it rain and rain and rain until I can catch it in this bottle. And then once it's clear and I can take a drink and not taste anything crazy and there's no sediment or minimal sediment, then I let it go into the rain catch. And now I'm gonna start taking it over to the big cistern and hopefully have enough water to get enough water going. y'all so I got this nice hill here I used gravity the good Lord gave us but I made a problem on that last one I sucked it a little too hard for a little too long and I breathed in too much water so I'm not gonna say it don't say it all right so now I got the water in there I got enough 30 gallons something like that so now I'm gonna plug this pump in and see if it goes. I got a little confused with the wires because they weren't red and black like normally they were some were brown and blue and some were white and black so I was like but then it said the black is a positive so I'm like I don't really know what to do. So I'm just gonna plug it in, hope some water squirts out. You're aiming at our faces. It ain't gonna go that fast. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Unplug it before you play the electrics. You're gonna electrocute yourself. Should be right. So that could have been the culprit. It's working. What is all the nozzles turned to on? Did you stick it on? Oh shoot! It's coming! Wow! Why are you more excited? We got hose water. Don't waste it all. You did it. Man. I drank a little bit of it just because I'm crazy like that. <laughs> okay, so overall, I'm pretty happy with how that went. Looks like some rain might be coming. I'd like to get half a cistern before I start doing things like filling up the water tanks and doing laundry. So we're going to try to figure that out. Y'all let me know how this works. I feel like this is the lid that goes on it to keep caca and all that stuff out. But it seems like when it starts raining, you could flip it over and use it to catch more rain. Is that how cisterns work? Let me know in the comments below. All right, 
It's been a couple days. We were super excited that our water was working, but it didn't actually work for our situation, for the washing machine. Obviously, we are new and unexperienced. And what did we learn, Matt? We learned that the wash cycle that is really long on that particular machine. It takes like an hour to do a load of laundry. So between the fill cycle and while it's agitating, it's too long for just the pump to be running straight, not being able to flow. So the pump kind of heats up and shuts off. And then when the water kicks back on, the pump doesn't kick back on because it has shorted itself or stopped for some reason. So what was happening was we would be trying to do a load. It would fill up the water, start washing. We're like, okay, cool. I'd go off, start cutting down some weeds. And then I'd come back and the whole machine would just be stopped. So we had to sort that out by getting an on-demand uh, pump attachment which just screws into the top of the pump and then now it's on demand so it goes once the water is not going for just a second or so it kicks off the pump and then when the water starts flowing again it kicks back on it's good for if you're doing laundry of course or if you're you know spraying something or cleaning something off you can just kink the hose and it'll stop the pump and then when you unkink it it'll go again so it's pretty much good for everything something i had to be done but it was like an 80 dollar part and of course i was trying to just not pay for it up front and i tripped over it when i tried to do my laundry so gotta be careful you, you, you can trip over 80 bucks here and there So one thing that's kind of slowed me down on taking my Mr. Do work here and going down and ripping through these mountains is the more that I've gotten into it, the more that I've started to find like fruit trees and coffee trees and stuff like that, the closer I get through it. And that's one of the good things about going slow is that I've found guava trees. I found some coffee plants. I found coffee plants that are actually producing seeds. So the problem is though, is that it has these vines all over it. So it's really slowed down my process in order to save these, which I really want to do because coffee plants take a long time to produce, is I really want to like hand pull the vines off so I don't hurt them so that they stay alive. I was talking to a friend of mine here who said that this was his grandfather's farm, you know, down the street a little bit. It used to be his grandfather's farm. So he was telling me all about it. And he was saying that he used to have coffee here. It's got all sorts of trees everywhere. So he said, there's a lot of stuff on there you could probably save. So be careful while you're cleaning. now that I have found some wild growing fruits on the farm, I've you know, found guava, co coffee, parchas, bananas, I have realized that I haven't planted anything too cool yet. Kristen made her pumpkin patch, but I'm getting into projects that are taking me four, five, six days at a time to get into. So what I'd like to do is take a little bit of time today, make myself like a little, I don't know, 10 by 10 garden, little furrowed patch so that I can plant some things, have them growing while I'm doing all the other stuff, while I'm clearing out, while I'm fixing chickens, coops, while I'm doing chasing baby kittens around, trying to fend off the hawks and the owls. So today I'm gonna try to get that done. I'd like to get it done today and tomorrow because we found ourselves with a little extra time and I need to get some food going. I'm talking about y'all you see coming here with a bobcat we're just been mowing everything over but look at this coffee plant i got beans i got red beans these are about to get harvested today and cherries cherries boy
All right, so I got this land pretty cleared out of all the vines and some small brush. I uh, did some work with Mr. Do Work there, and it worked really well. I got it down though to basically like stumps and bigger pieces and things that I have to cut out. So now I have to bring in some more chopping tools that get straight down into the soil so that I can get all this cleared out, brought down to bare dirt, trench it out for drainage and for planting. And for that, I'm gonna have to bring in some heavier tools. The pickaxe, the shovels is gonna help, the rake. Um, and all pretty much hand tools and a lot of people are like oh you know you can bring in a chainsaw you can bring in a weed eater this that, and the other which is great and i have gotten those because they do work well in certain situations but i feel like some of the hand tools for this more i don't know if you call it artisanal artisanal land clearing but like where you want to find bushes and you don't just want to go in and knock everything over it works really well and i'll show you some of the reasons why i use that in lieu of a weed eater or a chainsaw because those two are great for pushing big chunks, but they have in this particular clearing environment, they have some shortcomings. So the problem I've been running into with the power tools, the hand power tools is that if you look at an area like this, looks pretty flat, looks kind of bushy, everything's pretty soft, and you would think, oh, I can just go through there with my weed eater and knock all that down pretty quick. Two problems with that is these vines get caught when you get that heavy duty cutter, they get caught in it, they wrap up and they bog it down. That's one thing that happens because these are long, well-established vines. These aren't like grasses or shorter twigs or something like that. Another problem is that very big trees, you know, three to four inch diameter trees can get caught, can be buried in there. Um, so you don't see them. And if you hit that with your, with the heavy duty prongs or with the whippers, um, it breaks them. It's bad for the equipment and it, and it breaks it. Whereas those thicker trees, the chainsaw can cut, which is great for that, but it's so buried in vines that the chainsaw, the vines are so loose that when the chainsaw goes against them, they don't cut, they just move. And when you move the chainsaw, they just move back. So the hooked machete works great. It can get through some of those softer three inch, two to three inch trees. And it can also slice through the vines and it can also bundle them up and be used like as a you know, a rake or something or a pitchfork or something like that too. So really been loving that for now. But once this is done, then and, and little weeds are starting to grow back and little grass wispies are starting to come back. That's where the string trimmer is going to shine going through when everything is cleared and clearing limbs and stuff like that is where the chainsaw is really going to shine. But for now, I'm buried in these weeds. The Mr. Do Work is the best one for me. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. cutting up these dirt and the dirt seems nice and fertile not only with the jungle that I had to cut through to see the dirt but also every time I chop it up there's these big worms in there so everybody in gardening and what not all the reading I say here all the reading I read says that's a good sign for lots of animals to be living in your dirt so I'm taking these and I'm saving them up for Juicy Juicy likes a nice worm snack here and there and Roxanne Roxanne's having a special moment we might can share that with you later and get some input from you guys but yeah, we're saving all the tender vittles for our babies. All right, so I got this flattened out, unweeded. Got as many roots out as I think I'm going to get. It's pretty flat, I got it down. I turned it one time, I hoed it. You know, just a couple of hoes out here working. You know what I'm saying? Maybe back in my day. But uh, any hoodles. I got it ready now, and now I'm gonna plow out my, I don't know if they're called furrows, what, what they're called, but basically it's gonna be little ditches for two purposes. One, for it to drain, and two, for it to have a mound for the seed to sit on and come out. It's kind of like loose soil. 
and I think it's gonna work. And I gotta work fast because I got a pretty gnarly storm coming. It looks like it's riding all around me, so I gotta go. All right, so it's gonna be a good day for Juicy. I got these just in a couple of hard strokes. I think that, uh, I think it could be the weather. I think worms and stuff like that knows when it's gonna rain and they come up more to the surface. So right now, we're getting some really good things. I do feel bad taking these and feeding them to Juicy. I'm trying to find grace and like not hurt things and not destroy things if I don't have to, but you got, you know, the things you'll do for the, the things you love. You know, the people and the chickens that you love, you'll do just about anything. much gotten his nice little garden all situated he's still covered in dirt it just rained for about an hour I don't know if you can hear on this microphone but our little creek is now turned into the rapids of hell basically when it rains all the water comes down to our creek and that's why it's orange it takes all the dirt because the soil here is orange so it takes it all down there when it doesn't rain for a few days it's like clear beautiful swimmable water but yeah you could see shrimps and fishes in there but when it rains as a farmer would say when the, when the rains over yonder all the water comes down here and it basically turns into yoohoo colored <laughs> this fills from the rain so that's why it clears up so fast um, I've been enjoying it I've been looking at the raging rapids I'm gonna say they're class three three to five and I wanted to pump up the paddleboard and take you guys for a ride down the river with the GoPro Kristen said absolutely not you get sucked maybe, down maybe in the hole. Maybe one day, but it, it looks dangerous. But we're up here because we want to show you what's happening in our chicken coop. Okay, so I'm going to open this very quietly because Roxanne has gone for the last like two or three days. She's gone broody and she won't get off her eggs, so I don't want to disturb her too much, but I just want to give you a slight peek into what her life has been like for the last two or three days. So she's sitting in her box and she hasn't gotten off of it. We tried to put food and water like next to her because we're kind of worried about her not eating or drinking, but we tried to Google it online and they act like that happens. But... She kind of is in like a trance, but I did pick, catch some worms. So she will eat worms from here and there. And then every now and again, she does come out for like an hour, but she's been leaving Juicy primarily on his own. I took some of y'all's advice and I got him some new hens and with the success that I was having free ranging, I thought I could free range them too. He chased them off, they ran away. But this one baby rooster that came with the deal stayed with the package. So he's been keeping juicy company and- Let me know. clear the story up a little better. We went to a friend's house in the farmland, in the city, not the city, what, is, what would you call this? The barrio? The barrio. <laughs> we went to the neighborhood guy and he had really big chickens. We have the silkies, which are the small chickens. What juicy? I'm trying he, to tell the story. He's small. He's like, I ain't oh, small. Oh, sorry, you're a big I'm boy. Regular big size. boy. Anyways, 
these hens that we got were like velociraptors and Matt just let them like in the cage and then free and Juicy did not like them at all and he fluffed up and ran them off. We couldn't catch them and unfortunately instead of getting two hens now we're stuck with a baby other rooster for Juicy. The chickens were $12 each so I owed him $24 and I only had 20s. And he didn't have change, so he, he said. He didn't really want that. He said, "If you take this rooster, I'll give you the four dollars off." And I said, "Fine." He said that the rooster's brothers got eaten by an owl. So yeah. I said, "All right, fine. We'll rescue this sweet baby. He's kind of cool, but I don't want really want a bunch of roosters." Yeah. Now we have two roosters and one hen that's staying in her box. So. And a dog got was on our property. <laughs> There's a lot of animal activity happening, but we need to get some hens for Juicy. We're still working on it. He's. Hopefully not getting too angry, and I hope nothing horribly bad's happening. So, my chicken friends, leave some comments down below. Please don't give me worst case, like he's about to die and you're being the worst chicken mom ever. Please, that hurts my feelings. Well, he's so, getting along <laughs> with, with the other rooster and, you know, I saw him wrestling the other day, so <laughs> he's getting here. his needs met, which is... I don't think so. Anyways, we'll see you guys next episode on this wild wild land that we don't know what we're doing hopefully we might have some sprouts by next episode we'll see bye